Welcome back everybody, Jesse here. Welcome to another episode in the inventory system. In today's episode, we're just gonna set up some basic functionality that's gonna allow us to be able to remove items from our inventory. Now, it's what we set up today. Uh, let me go ahead and show you. If we pick up a bunch of items here, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of both these items. You'll see we got some items in our inventory. If we hover over a slot and press the D key, it's gonna delete it from the inventory, press the D key, and it's going to remove it come back over here and i'm going to pick up some more bread and you're going to see it fills in the slots there that have been missing uh, do that and pick up a couple more berries and there we go again this is going to be some functionality that we really want uh, put in our system we're not going to want to be able to hover over this and press d uh, except for maybe if we come in here and we press the d key and we want to be able to drop it out of the inventory then this functionality will be uh, perfect for that but what we end up setting up to be able to do this will be at, uh, usable for other functions that we want to create in the future like maybe hover over it and press a different key like the i key or something and be able to inspect the item and have it pop up here so we can get a, a grander look at exactly what the inventory item is or, uh, there's a bunch of different things we could do with this so the functionality kind of lead up to that so starting in the next episode we're going to get started with the drag and drop system so sit back relax and enjoy this video this episode is brought to you by the patrons listed on the screen here. If you'd like to support the channel, then go down in the description. You'll find links to my Patreon and my Buy Me A Coffee page. If you'd like to join the community, then jump on over into the Discord and join in the conversation there. All right, so this should be a relatively quick episode. Uh, we just got a simple function we're going to set up, but we're going to set up a little bit of functionality to be able to test it. But the functionality that we set up to test it is actually going to set up a little bit of extra functionality that we're going to be able to use down the road for some other things. And uh, I'll explain that as we get moving forward here. But after this episode, we should be jumping into the drag and drop operation. So, and that's going to probably be uh, multi video kind of a, a mini subset uh, series within this inventory series, but we'll see how that goes. It's gonna be a little bit more of an intermediate complex kind of uh, video segment, but it should be fun. So we'll get into that starting in the next episode, but for this one, let's set up one of the last functions that we're gonna need moving into that. So we are currently in our AC inventory component. Let's go ahead and add a new function here. And let's call this new function, remove item. All right, this is what we're going to use internally within the function, within the inventory system, uh, within the inventory component, rather, to be able to remove items from the inventory. Uh, this will be like if we're dropping items from the inventory or moving it into a storage unit or anything like that, we're going to end up wanting to do this. So let's go ahead and select the remove item. Head over to the input section here. We need to add input and output to it. And the input, we're going to call this item, and we need to make this of type inventory item struct select that and on the output we're just going to end up making this a boolean i'm going to call this b success uh, success there we go and change its type to boolean all right so what we need to do here is now we just need to drag off of our item slot and let's break this and all we're going to end up needing from here is the inventory index so let's grab our item from the or our item array rather and let's go ahead and type get we want to make sure you want to get a reference to it because we're going to be setting the, some values within this and which item we want to get we want to get the index location from the item that we're passing in so now we need to come out and we need to go set members in f inventory item now what we're doing here since we are removing the items uh, within this inventory slot, we're removing everything. We're clearing it out. If you have whatever you have selected here as an open and available pin is what's going to get reset. So if you don't have a pin exposed, it's not going to reset it. So if we wanted our quantity to stay whatever our quantity was being passed in, not having that here, it's going to keep whatever was originally in that slot. So since we're deleting it, we want to remove everything from this. The only thing we don't want to change is the index location. So keep that there and that should be good to go. So take our return node now. Make sure we select success. It was successful. 
and that should about do it. That's really the only function that we're going to set up. Again, this is an internal function for dragging and dropping, um, but I want to make sure it works. And like I said, we've got another little bit of extra functionality I want to set up. It'll it'll be good for some future use. So let's just go ahead and jump in doing that. So let's go ahead and jump over to the inventory slot. All right, so in the inventory slot widget here, uh, we're gonna have to do a couple things here, but first things first, let's just go ahead and add a variable. I'm gonna call this one owning HUD, and I'm gonna change this variable type to primary HUD. We're gonna make it an object reference to our primary HUD widget. Um, this isn't always the best thing to do. You wanna try to prevent uh, creating hard references as much as possible, but it's not too big of a deal in this case. Uh, we kind of need this functionality, so it's not too big of a deal. Select it, and we need to come down here and we need to make sure we expose this on spawn. We'll go ahead and make an instance editable while we're down here. And what this is gonna do is obviously just gonna store a reference to our HUD. So now every time we create one of these slots, it's gonna insert here into uh, the slot itself, uh, the primary HUD. So let's head over to the primary HUD now. And from here inside the update inventory function, uh, you can see here, scroll back so you can see inside the function here where we create the slot. If we come down here and right click on the inventory slot widget where we create, you'll see refresh nodes, do that, and now you'll see the owning HUD pop up. So for this, go ahead and create a reference to self, and that's what we're gonna pass in here. So that way it has access to this widget. So now if we jump into the function on key down, remember this is the function that we tapped into. It's uh, an override function uh, called on key down. This is where we have the tab and the escape key for being able to back out of the inventory when the inventory is open. Uh, from within here, uh, this is where we're gonna do our check. So drag off of the get key and do another equal equal. And we want to, I'm gonna set mine initially to the D key. So I'll just select the keyboard there till it's yellow, hit D and it will populate the key that you want to use there. So, like I said, this functionality is going to end up being just for us to test the remove item today. Uh, it's really not important that we test it, but I wanted to kind of give you guys a visual thing of the function that we're creating. But by doing this as well, like I said, this can set up functionality a little bit down the road. Um, you can drag off of here, use the same logic that we're going to set up in here, and you can do this, uh, have this functionality do something like maybe split a stack or um, maybe inspect the item so you can get a kind of a zoomed in view of it and be able to check out what the inventory item is, get more detailed information about it. Really the sky's the limit, whatever you want to do. But this functionality will kind of lend to being able to do that um, while also giving us the ability to make sure that the remove item is working properly in today's video. So I'm going to use the D key here and obviously we're going to need a branch for that. So go ahead and jump off of there and we're going to tap into the branch here. So after we're done checking to see if the key we press is either tab or escape, we're going to jump down here and we're going to check is it the D key and if it's not the D key then just like we did up here we want to set this up to just false we want to go ahead and end this function we don't want to do anything more within this function um, but if it is now what we need to do I need to create another variable here and I'm going to call this one over slot and we need to make sure it is type inventory slot it's going to be the the blueprint widget of the slot drag this off pull it out get it and if we right click here and just kind of left of the name in the open space you're going to see down at the very bottom we got convert to validated get uh, this just saves us an extra execution of having to run the uh, is valid function after this so if this is a valid in other words it's not null then what do we want to do we want to be able to call the function and all that fun stuff but first we need to uh, we'll just set up the is not valid. If it's not valid, then we just need to go ahead and back out of it here. And if it is valid, then let's get player character. And from here, we're actually gonna have to make a interface call to this. So open up your BI interact HUD and let's add a new function. And I'm gonna call this function remove item. And I'm going to set his input type to, uh, I'm going to call it an item. Why doesn't it want to set? Let's compile it. Doesn't want to set the name for me for some reason. Type in item. Let's try going inventory item struct. 
and see if this will let me set the name now. It's not letting me set the name now. I don't know why it's not letting me set the name. Hmm, that's strange. I don't know why it's not letting me. I'm going to do item struct or actually let's do inventory item. I'm not sure why it's not letting me set the name to just item there, but uh, I would just name that item if possible. And that should be it for this. So let's head back to the primary HUD. And now from here, let's drag off of the get player character and let's go remove item. We want to send a message to the player, uh, remove item. And what is the inventory item that we want to get rid of? Well, that's the uh, over slot. Let's grab that. Let's get the item from here. And that's the item we want to pass in. Go ahead and drag off of this item again. And this time let's break it. And from here, we're going to want the owning inventory from here. So go ahead and drag off of this and let's just double check. Let's make sure that the owning inventory is valid. That way we don't run this code on here and get any errors. It should be valid, but if not, then something went wrong. So we can handle that situation, but this should be, uh, should be valid at all times, as long as there's being passed a good object. So owning inventory, and actually this wouldn't have an owning inventory. If you try to push the D key over an empty slot, this won't be valid. So we won't run any functionality on there. So if it's not valid, Let's go ahead and we'll just return and back out of here. But if it is valid, let's drag off of the player character. I'm just going to add a reroute node to it. And let's go call update inventory HUD message. Plug that in here. And the inventory component we want is the owning inventory from that. So that way we can update the inventory when we're removing it. So that way we don't have to back out of the inventory and go back in to make sure that our changes take effect. It'll take effect right in front of our face as soon as we push the button. And as soon as that's done, go ahead and copy that and just put it on here. And we're going to return that it has been handled. So before we go set this up in the player character, let's jump back here to the inventory slot really quick. And there's a couple functions over here that we're going to want to override. So come over here to functions, select override and go down until you see on mouse enter and then go over it again and go on mouse leave. Now, remember that uh, even though we may have a hundred different of these slots in our inventory system, each one is unique. So these two functions will detect when the mouse enters the proximity of this slot and as well, it will detect when we leave that area. So, well, what do we need to do once we enter it? Go ahead and grab your owning HUD and drag off of here and let's go set over slot. And the slot that we want to set this to is ourself. So it's going to get reference to whichever item is being set. And then likewise, when we uh, leave it, go ahead and just duplicate those two functions. And we want to essentially just clear it out. So make sure this is nothing uh, set to uh, null. So that way we don't have anything within the inventory slot. And head over now, let's go over to the true first person character. And in here, you'll see in the interfaces, we now have remove item. So double click that. And this is going to be real easy. Drag out the primary inventory and select remove item. And the item we want to remove will be the one that we're passing into it. So plug that in right there and compile and save it. And that should be pretty much it. Go ahead and hit play and let's see if it works. Now, if we walk up to an item here and press E, we got a berry in there. Let's jump over here and press E and we got some bread. So if we select this middle one and press the D key, there we go. It automatically removes it from the inventory. And now let's make sure that it's going to end up dropping that. So let's grab some more berries. This is set to a stack of two. So we got two here and two there. There we go. So we filled in that slot. So we know we were able to remove the item successfully and make it available to something else. And if we come back over here and select bread, it's going to fill up the bread there. Press D and let's try that again. There we go. It's filling it in. 
perfect. So our functionality works. So that should do it for this episode. Again, sorry, it, this was a pretty simple video, but this is uh, some important functionality we're gonna need to set up for the next uh, several videos that are gonna be coming out uh, moving forward where we start the drag and drop operation. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you coming by. Do me a favor, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe while you're down there liking it, hit the notify button. And until the next episode, peace.